everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like oh, button, yeah. and comment below. Without further ado, I bring to you E, also known as Eric Martin and Mr. Big. How are you doing, Eric? E, I'm doing good today. Uh, I have, uh, I'm gonna, I, I'm mixed emotions today. I'm, I'm happy to be going home after a really, really long time on the road. But this is my last show in the United States of America with Mr. Big. But yeah, yeah. You, you, all, you were telling me recently that are you going to Japan in the next little while? No. Uh, oh, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm with Talk Matsumoto Group. Um, after the Mr. Big, um, after tonight, this, this Buffalo show tonight in Billy Sheehan's hometown, by the way, I just want to throw that out. Oh, okay. I am. Uh, I'm going to go to um, L.A. in five days to record with with uh, Talk Matsumoto Group. This thing I did uh, 20 years ago, TMG, and it was me, Jack Blades, Chris Frazier from Foreigner on drums, and Talk Matsumoto, and it was you know, is a Japanese very famous guitar player from a band called Bees, 90 million records easily. Billy Sheehan even played on tour with these guys at one time in his life. Um, and this guy wanted an American rock and roll feel. And we, we like 20 years ago, it was uh, a platinum record. We did 20 sold out shows in Japan and that was it. And I never heard from these guys or heard from talk again. I've seen him a couple of times in Japan and all that, but uh, just recently, he said he wanted to do a, re a reunion of our tour and, and make another album. And this time, because Chris Frazier is going to be doing some foreigner work, we have uh, me, Jack Blades, Tak Matsumoto, and Matt Sorum from Guns N' Roses. And five days I'm going to L.A. to record with them. And then after the Mr. Big finishes, kaput and over and done, and, you know, it's all she wrote. Then I go to Japan to tour with Tak Matsumoto in uh, September. So there you go. Yeah, I was just going to say September because you got a lack of shows in Europe still to do. Um, the next one is going to be the big hotbed of Bulgaria. Have you been to Bulgaria before? Yeah, I was in I mean, the last time I was in Bulgaria. I played an acoustic show, and it was and it was packed, way more packed than it usually would be. Or like an acoustic show but when i walked into the to the venue i looked up at the marquee and it said mr big it said mr big and i was like i was like oh, fuck, how long is that been up there and i even told the guy i was like oh but what are you from mr big like he isn't i don't think anybody from bulgaria talks that way are you from mr big you know like boris and natasha but um <laughs> he he, he he got up on a ladder and took the Mr. Big down. He goes, what should I put? I'm like, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I put Eric Martin. And he goes, okay. And then Eric Martin, lead singer. And like, you know, he didn't have enough letters. So it was like lead singer, singer. <laughs> lead anyway, singer. But it was already packed and they were already in there. And hmm. uh, yeah, that's the last time I played in Bulgaria. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've been there a bunch of times with Mr. Big. You're, right, you're you know, fast in the nineties, you know. Constantly on the road, and um, I mean, I get homesick if I go to an all-inclusive for seven days. I mean, what's it like on the road? And uh, we were corresponding about a couple months ago. Bear, and it's and hard. The traveling me, is crazy. You'd mentioned to me it's tough being in this band. What did, what did you mean by that? I think it's it. Well, what I meant when when we talked, and I and I want to, you know, like you jump around as much as I jump around in the conversation. But yeah. uh, well, I think what I met with that one was uh, I was drinking pretty heavy at like in, in the, like in the COVID years. Oh my yeah. God. I just, I, 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 that's all I did was just, I bought toilet paper and I drank so much, you know, and I would pass by the mirror and I'd go, you <laughs> just good. I couldn't handle it, but I, I drank so much. And being in the band is tough because there's a lot of booze back there, you know, and um, it's hard to to not drink so much. 
and be, I'm a social butterfly, you know, I love, yeah. I, you know, the, two of my favorite things to do is to be performing on stage with Mr. Big, but when I come off stage, it's like after show, da, 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 you know, and it, that's the tough part to yeah. balance out um, health and, um, you know, because it's not celebrating a, too much. It's not a party, man. You know, I treated like a party for years. I was like, all right, I can't wait to get out of the house, be away from the wife for a little while and get out there on the road and and uh, rock out and, you know, have a few knocks and be the life of the party, lampshade on the head. And you just can't do that. You can't do that and be 100 percent every night. And that's why it's tough. Takes a toll for sure. Now, you had a recent um, medical, I wouldn't say scare, but um, you um, weren't able to perform at your very best. Was this during that time or was it something just strained from all the shows you were doing? This was a couple months back. Uh, no, no, no. Was, uh, I wasn't prepared for the Mr. Big thing at all. I bit off oh. so much more than I could chew. Wow. I was doing... Uh, uh, I, I have another project that I did a bunch of years ago called Mr. Vocalist. Mm -hmm. uh, ridiculous name, but very lucrative Mr. Vocalist. <laughs> uh, on Sony Records. And it was kind of like singing J-pop songs uh, made popular by women. It kind of sounds weird, but Sony Records hired me to do, give it like a male interpretation of it. And I did really good on it. So hundreds of thousands of records on it, like three or four records and a box set and DVDs and all that. And that was many years ago, but I, I've been doing these projects again. Yeah. And, and I was, and I was also touring with Aventasia, yeah. a rock opera, doing acoustic touring. Um, which is easy, but it's still, it's a lot of traveling and a lot of wear and tear and, and all that. But, and I forgot about, cause I've been singing Mr. Big songs in the acoustic world for years, that daddy brother and alive and kick in and to be with you and just take my, just take my heart. But I've been doing rock stuff with solo projects, you know, like I'll play casinos or the, those festivals and county fairs and all that with the guys in Trickster backing me up. And it was pretty easy. But with Mr. Big, 23 songs of just straight ahead rock and roll and not a lot of hotels, just tour bus, <laughs> tour bus hotels, uh, night after night. And and since it was the big finish, I mean, look, I, I try to be 100% every night, but mm -hmm. I kind of felt overworked and I wasn't prepared. So when we played, I think our first gigs, maybe it was like China, Indonesia, all that. Japan was great. Asia was awesome. But when we went to the United States, I played Texas, a couple of shows. I remember going to Maine, going, you know, working all the way up to Maine. And after Maine, oh my God, I totally, can I, am I allowed to yeah. cuss on you, Joe? Yeah, yeah, I fuck yeah. Holy shit, the bed in New Jersey, just, I mean, I, no, I mean, first it was clearly Clearwater, Florida, and I had to cancel it. And I, I, I redeemed myself. I, I, um, I played Clearwater the other day. Mm -hmm. We got a chance to make it up. And I, and I was, I was good. I was great. I was fine. Everybody, nobody, nobody said they didn't like it. Everyone was like, holy shit, you're great. I'm like, oh, that was good. <laughs> So, uh, but New Jersey, it was a sold out, packed audience, you know, all, almost felt like it was in the round. And I sat up there for two hours, physically couldn't even, nothing was coming out. It was like, everything sounded, everything sounded like, uh, you know, dark, thrashy, heavy metal. Mm. And it was like, <clears throat> nothing came out. And I could feel the band looking at me going, oh. God, man, dude, you know, and I mentally, I, it, it, it screwed me up. It, 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 it was, I felt, I was so depressed and that screwed it up too, because being depressed, um, stressed out, it made it worse. And I went to a bunch of doctors and anyway, there was about three or four or five shows mm -hmm. that weren't good. And 
Then my boy started to come back and I finished out the US tour. Then I came home for a couple of weeks, same shit, went to Europe, played a bunch of gigs and then something happened. But no, I played a few gigs, something happened. And then I went, I'm not about to cancel anything now because it's a big finish. Mm -hmm. There's no way in hell that we're going to get be able to fly up home after this tour and then fly back to Europe again to make up. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, we are going to Europe now and I guess we could have done makeup, but mentally I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle the stress of it. And after one of those shows in England, I don't remember where it was. I want to say maybe Wolverhampton. I don't know. But Paul went to take a shower. Nick was in the other room. I was sharing the room with Billy. And I just go, hey, man, I get this idea. I want to bring out a friend of mine, uh, Michele Lupe. It's pronounced Michele Lupe from uh, Whitesnake. He's a keyboard player, singer. Mm -hmm. I've known for years. And ironically, he's... He was in a band called uh, Mr. Pig. Oh, and, wow. and I swear to God, and he, was, he was, you know, he did, they did Mr. Big music and they also did other songs from the 90s, but mainly Mr. Big back in the day uh, as a tribute band, okay. uh, you know. And I thought anybody who can back me up, you know, and he, he super nice guy, Italian guy, um, and I indirectly got, I want to say indirectly, I don't know the other word, but I think Red Beach called me up or somebody from the White Snake camp and said, do you know a keyboard player, singer that could uh, play with uh, with, with uh, Coverdale? And I go, I do. This guy, Michele Lupe, is, he's fantastic and he'd be perfect. So he got the gig. Maybe other people helped him get the gig, but he owed you one. I got him the gig. So anyway, I don't know if he owed me or not. He's such a nice guy. He, when I called him up and then I said, I need somebody to shadow me on these shows. When I sing the lead, I'm also singing, just to fly. You know, I'm singing the choruses and I needed yeah. him to do the choruses for me with the band. You know, I, I would sing in a lower key or something, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and also help me shadow me on, on a couple songs like Lucky This Time and Never Say Never. So he he said he had it. He he actually canceled a few things, but he he came out for a big important show, London, Paris, and, and like two more. And then he went back and you know to his world. And it helped it helped me immensely. And like some people were saying, like, yeah, what main me, me, Sorry, I'm stuttering here. Sorry. Uh, stuttering John. I'm not nervous about it. I think no, no. a part of me is like, uh, people were like, you suck. You, you know, like, man, that guy sucks. Maybe you had to have some help. Well, look, I could have canceled the show yeah. and made hundreds of people really super unhappy because it's not just the people. When you play in London, they're not all from London, you boneheads. You know, yeah. they're from everywhere. And they flying in. It costs like so much money for the hotels and all the stuff. And same thing in New Jersey. I mean, I feel in tech, I feel incredible sadness for screwing the pooch on that gig. Yeah. And hopefully, I don't know if I can ever make that up to those folks. But anyhow, he came out, gave me the rest that I needed, and even just wrote me just now. And he goes, "Do you need my help in Europe?" I'm like. I'm all good, bro. I'm good now. I'm good now. Um, do you do anything different now, like for warm ups or anything? Like, I was going to ask you something that just dawned on me. When you go from different altitudes flying and stuff, does that affect yeah. your voice? Yeah, big time. Airplanes, yeah. breathing that crap air. Oh my yeah. God. It's the worst. It's like I have allergies to begin with, but that is allergy public enemy number one. Let me hold up a minute. I got something there. Oh, right on. There's a uh, there's this guy. I can't remember the guy's name at the moment. He, but he created this uh, water bottle. It's a product. It's called Doctor Vox. I swear to God, it looks kind of ridiculous, but and it's and it's hard plastic. Um, Doctor V O X. 
you can look online. It's kind of that concept of when we were kids, when we would take a water bottle and put a straw in it and like and blow bubbles or chocolate milk. milk. Yeah, chocolate milk, fine, earnest with your deadpan face. Um, but you, there's no water in it now, but like you, you put like water, it's different kind of levels. And, and you're like, when you do like a vocal lesson or I do a vocal run exercise, but it's like, it has this sound like, and it, it, um, it basically warms up your throat with the vibrations and you do it all day long. You know, I mean, you're only supposed to do it three hours, man. I'm like, this is like, this is an apparatus now. This is part of me. And I just like do this all day. And then I also have this, they have those big ones you can get it on amazon.com. I think uh, it's like that nebulizer thing that, you know. Oh, like a people, bong. What? Oh, a bong. Yeah, it kind of looks like a bong for, you, for those who uh, partake in that drug world. Anyway, I used to have a friend back in the 70s who was so stoned all the time that when he ran out of the, the 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 pot, he would drink the bong water. That is that you know what that is committed. That's he committed. doesn't give up. So anyway, so Doctor Box. So it's like it's like a, it's a nebulizer or whatever they call it. You know, but I have a little one that I got from Amazon, little nebulizer, and it blows out like steam and 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 you put saline in it. Okay. And it's and it's the best. And those two things with Billy Sheehan's wife, Elizabetta, she's a real estate agent, but she's also a healer. And she gave me all these like potions and interesting drinks that like energizing and homeopathic uh, uh, medicine that's been kind of helping me lately. It's hard, you know, because first of all, scratchy voice, Eric Martin, always. Mm -hmm. but a lot of talking and you can't talk so much. So, and I don't know why people want to talk to me all the time on podcasts or interviews. I mean, you got Billy Shane and Paul Gilbert, you got now Nick DeVigilio, but they just want to, you know, they just want to hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I won't keep you too much longer because I know you got a sound check in a couple hours or less than that. Um, the hair, what's going on there? <laughs> My girlfriend, uh, who was later my wife, uh, Stacy, years ago, uh, when I had like really cool hair back in the day, when the pretty boy days of the 80s and 90s, she goes, you got to cut your hair because, you know, you got to get hit with the sign of the times. And I'm like, sign of the times, man. I've never been, you know, a follower. I'm like, nah, I, nah, I don't give a shit. I've had it since high school. And mm -hmm. she cut it. She, she had a cut. It was like really super short. And for years and years, and nobody knew who I was for 15 years or so. And then my, uh, then I got married again to uh, to Denise, who's, you know, still a really, really good friend and everything. But she, uh, it, she goes, you got to grow your hair back. And it just, no offense to you, Ernest. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe you choose She's to. Right here, man. Yeah, yeah. Right on, man. You look good. Yeah. Like, hey, I can't grow any beard. Been trying for years. I'm trying to comb it up. Yeah, looks good. You should do that with your chest hair. Oh man, you get to see that. Never mind. Yeah, I hope not. Uh, so uh, it's growing out, and it's and this is taken. Okay, well, I talked about Denise, but it I never it never grew right, and I tried to do it, and there was a couple of Mr. Big albums. Was one was called What If, mm -hmm. and I and it was like out to here. It's not the cool curly hair like it used to be. It's, it's like an afro. Like so a chia head. A chia pet head. And so this is my second attempt uh, doing it. It's like eight months and I'm in Dick City right now, as they say. Well, and why probably, do they call it? Uh... Back in the day, I used to have banks. But at 60 plus years old, no good for banks. So it's like parted in the middle. And then yeah. I got something going on here. Some kind of a Kip Peninsula. Winger, Kip Winger Wolverine thing happening. 
Maybe a, a little bit of a Bonnie Raitt, gray hair popping out. You yeah. can do a long streak. You can be Tulsi Gabbard. Who? Tulsi Gabbard, the governor of Hawaii. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, But I'm, I'm doing more Wolverine. Okay. Yeah. I'm not really doing anything. This is, I'm going to color this bad boy from when I just I get home. And then I'm thinking about cutting this thing, man. I got to, or lighting it on fire. Ooh, we don't want to do that. Arson, that's not a good, that's not a good look on anybody. Is it, runner, yeah. Poor Richard Pryor. Yeah, poor Richard Pryor. Okay, so the new album is coming out July 12th. It's called 10. And I'm just curious as how um how much time you guys spent on the name. Why did you guys name it 10? Uh, man, it, me and Paul Gilbert wrote a, a lot of the songs, right? right. It took a, took us less time to write the songs than to come up with an album cover, look, and 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 title. Well, I like the cover. I just I'm just curious. I love the cover too. I mean, I like this vibe. Uh, ten, come on, ten well, fingers. The, no, you have two thumbs and eight fingers. Okay, you're. People would argue that ten would be the amount of. No, 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 no. You, no. you would argue with your nine personalities. You like have a brain cell. No, and I, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, um, so it's the tenth album, but interestingly enough, Pearl Jam's first album is called Ten, and their tenth yeah. album is called Lightning Bolt. Can I can I interject here? Absolutely, it's your show. You think you think anybody outside? You you think anybody but me, and Mr. Big would listen to Pearl Jam? I don't think so. No offense to Eddie and uh, Goose or, you know, Go you know Goss or whatever. That's, the that's the only person I know in the band. It's true. Yeah. I mean, like great band. And I do, I ended up liking that band over the years. I didn't want to like them, but it's a, it was one of those things. I was like in the eight, in the nineties and you know, when they came along, I was like, they're taking food out of my mouth. Anyway. Mm. Uh, yeah. But I did, yeah, I, I did say, you know, when I go, you know, Pearl Jam's got 10. And I go, so, and, and nobody in our band was like, they didn't say who, but they were like, so? I mean, look, I said this the other day to somebody. Uh, I had an album back in the day. It was called Destroy All Monsters, my solo album. Paul mm -hmm. Gilbert had a solo record that I just saw over the last couple of years. I, I Will Destroy or I Can Destroy. You think everybody cares? Nobody pays attention to anything. We're not trying to, yeah. But anyway, 10. If I, I'm going to tell you just a little, I'll probably get in trouble for this, but uh, we couldn't think of a title, a look. You know, Pat Torpy came up with a lot of puns and like bump ahead and hey man and all that kind of stuff. Billy right. Sheen came up, lean into it and we found the train and everything worked. But, uh, we got so sick of trying to figure out an album cover and everybody's and me too. I, somebody would show me something. I go, that sucks. And I go, I chose somebody, somebody and something. And they go, that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So Paul found this thing. Oh, thank God this didn't work. It would have been the kiss of death. It looked kind of lean into it. Sepia tone colors, the red, Mr. Big, but it was the back end of a cow. Right. And it was going to be called, in hind in hindsight, you know, in hindsight, right? And and yeah. it was quirky you know, it was kind of funny, but mm. it would have been, it would have been probably too deep. What? Wow. That is, uh, I don't think you're going to get in any trouble for that. Well, not now because we didn't use it. So it's ten, baby. Everybody go out and check uh, the links. You can pre-order it and get all the merch. You've got it on vinyl as well. It's coming out on Frontier Records. Um, one last thing here. Um, well, two last things. What's the opposite of unsubscribe? Pretty sure you know the answer. Subscribe. Everybody do as Eric Martin says. Subscribe to the channel. And um, your show in Canada recently, I couldn't make it, but how was the show? It was It was my, my cool adjective. Like I, if I go like this to my kids, I go, that's dope. That, that show was dope. They're like, dad, you're just not, you're not hip anymore. Uh, it was, it was really great. I don't know why you could make it. Uh, it was eight it? hours oh. away. Canada is a big country. 
It is. Couldn't you just get on your moose and like ride, Sally ride? Yeah, it's not moose season, but I, I should have made the show. But I'm going to see you guys when you come back to the States. Um, are you going to be? Uh, you know what? Right? I got to tell you something. Yeah. I, gotta, I do you miss that humor. You it do, is right? dry as a martini. I love yeah. it, man. Hey, I appreciate you taking out the time. Um, have a good show tonight in Buffalo at the Electric City. And why do they call it Dick City? I don't get that. No, no, no. I'm in Dick City. This is the Electric City. Why do they call it Dick City? Yeah. I don't know. I heard the term. Again, not hip. Maybe they call it something else. Dick City was uh, maybe a 70s thing. I'm not hmm. hip. I'm not, I don't, there's no sign of the times, you know, I don't, uh, I don't know what, I don't see the sign. I saw the sign. Everybody go to the website below, get the album and the merch and, uh, We'll see you soon, Eric, and maybe we'll catch you back on the show um, when you get back from touring in a couple of years. Always on or, the road. Or sooner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here for you. Hey, I'm glad we're back. Thanks, Eric. Cheers. All right, man. See you, man. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. Hey, bye, kids. Th <laughs> hey, always think big. All right.